Welcome to Supply Chain Horizons, our video podcast series that looks at crucial issues facing global supply chain teams. This video podcast is sponsored by Logility, a leading provider of supply chain solutions used by more than 1,250 companies in more than 70 countries around the world. You can access this podcast and many others by visiting www.logility.com and just click on the library link. So let's get started. I'm Corinne Bursa, Vice President at Logility, and I'd like to share with you some enlightening conversations that I've been having with supply chain innovators and industry insiders. Today's topic is VMI. That's right, Vendor Managed Inventory. So VMI was once an incredibly hot topic. It started to lose some favor. It was seen as placing a little too much of the burden on the seller. As VMI has gained a renewed sense of purpose in today's dynamic global economy, we thought to look at how it has changed as well as what companies can do to really ensure their success with their VMI programs. So with me today is Ron Burnett. He's a product director at Logility, and he's going to help us with a discussion around the latest best practices. So Ron, thanks for joining us today. I really appreciate your time. Well, thanks for inviting me, Corinne. And, you know, I think what would be helpful is just to talk about fundamentals a little bit. In a broad sense, what is vendor-managed inventory? Uh, that's a good question, Corinne. And over the years, as you've mentioned, VMI has been a, a, a process that's gone in and out of um, popularity. And I think when you look at VMI at the basic level, it's really the process of where the seller is responsible for maintaining the buyer's inventory level. It's to help provide better insight for that seller into what their buyer is doing by accessing point of sale data or POS data and then using that information to help better manage their inventory investment at key locations within their, uh, the buyer's uh, supply chain. So I think what they were trying to use was to set up a plan where they could maintain a, an agreed-upon customer service level of products. But I think what happened over time, Corinne, was that too much emphasis was being placed back on the seller of the product, and the buyer was taking more of a hands-off uh, focus on that particular, on the VMI process. So, so, Ron, is the interest in VMI typically driven by the customer or by the supplier? If we want to take a historical look, I think it was the supplier that was more interested in the VMI relationship. And that's why it tended to be more of one-sided. I think in today's environment, uh, as, our, as we've seen our economy change over the last few years, that the buyers have also gain more interest in some type of collaborative process with their suppliers. And this is why VMI is now starting to regain popularity and why I've started to use the term collaborative VMI to talk about this re-emphasis on the vendor-managed inventory process. Okay, so, so we're saying historically this was a supplier-driven initiative. And, and so what was in it for the supplier? It sounds like it could be a whole lot of work. Where's the, you know, where's the benefit? I think the key benefit the supplier was looking for was insight into their partner's buying patterns. And that key emphasis was on point-of-sale data, which would help them manage their inventory investment later. But they found that the point of sale data really didn't drive all the benefits that a supplier was looking for, and also that the buyers weren't necessarily working with them on providing other key pieces of information that we'll get into, such as what are my uh, promotions that I'm planning to run over the next three, six, nine months, some of those key insights that would help that supplier do a better job of scheduling their production plans and level loading their production plans. So what's happened now is we've moved out of that supplier doing all the work, managing the inventory investment. 
not with great visibility into what the buyer's overall plans are, is now more into a shared environment where that buyer is sharing additional information with the supplier to help them do a better job of managing the inventory, or I shouldn't say inventory so much, but the, a, an agreed upon customer service level with the lowest amount of inventory needed to maintain that customer service level. Okay, so you've just taken us, us through a little bit of, of the history, if you will, of vendor managed inventory. Great value prop there, visibility of um, point of sale information. Sounds like a no-brainer. What are some of the pain points? Why didn't it live up to its potential? To say that there were no successful VMI implementations, that would be a little misleading. There were some, some issues with VMI implementations. VMI had been thought of as a static legacy process. It was really looked at as more of a almost like an IT process because it was very data intensive. So what happened after that first blush of success with implementing a VMI process, that information was typically turned over to just taking point of sale data from the buyer, transforming that into the seller's supply chain solutions, and running replenishment plans with very little user interactiveness. And so over time, as people don't touch a process, processes tend to start to degrade. And there was no mechanism set up to really allow a lot of user interaction once you set up the policies, you know, the service level or how many weeks of supply that you were guaranteeing to your buyer. Ron, what's changed? What's this evolution been? There's been a couple steps in the evolution, Corinne. The first one was a process called CPFR, Collaborative Planning, Forecasting, and Replenishment. And this process was basically to try to take a VMI, which was a static data-intensive process, and make it more interactive. What we found with CPFR was that it was a buyer-driven process. So the balance went from supplier all the way over to buyer. And so while CPFR was uh, intended to achieve, achieve this real-time demand sensing, it fell short for a number of different factors, including a lack of trust, siloed organizations, and inflexible planning system. CPFR started to add that layer of, I want to alert my supply chain teams when I have a problem, when I'm not going to be able to meet customer demand, or my inventory levels go below a certain level. But there was still something nagging within CPFR, and one of those issues was a very rigid process when it was initially defined. And, and a lot of companies felt uncomfortable meeting that rigidity. And I think what happened out of that was a process that we're seeing deployed now here in the last 12 to 18 months is something called collaborative VMI. It's really taking the best of both worlds from both the vendor-managed inventory process, which had that really strong underlayer of data technology in place, and CPFR, which had the collaborative processes in place. And this VMI-driven collaborative relations has helped increase the presence of their partners in their retail operations. So it's actually people looking at information, making decisions on a day-by-day, week-by-week process to make sure that they're understanding what their buyers' plans are in the upcoming months and how those suppliers are going to deliver products. It really gave them a stronger un analytical understanding of their customer behavior. And that's really what the bottom line of collaborative VMI is all about. And if you remember something else that I said a little bit earlier was one of the issues that VMI had was inflexible planning systems. And so if I'm getting this customer level information from my buyers, I as a supplier need to be able to use that and work with it. And back when VMI was in its probably its heyday, the systems really weren't flexible enough to do that customer customer ship to forecast generation, which would help then manage my inventory investment by customer. Supply chain solutions have adapted and evolved over time and now are very flexible to meet that need. And I think that's why we're seeing the increase in VMI popularity because they understand what the process needs to be and now they have the tools that are enable them to go out and actually implement the VMI 
or collaborative VMI solutions. What what's going on in the industry that's really driving this, and uh, and presenting perhaps a win-win scenario for both the uh, the buyer and the seller. I think number one, it, to me anyways, is the demand uncertainty that's out there in the supply chain world today. We definitely had a, a large turndown a couple of years ago. We're seeing signs of a recovery, but if you don't have good supply chain solutions that can do demand sensing to understand your customers' buying habits when you start to see this increase in demand. And so the tools that are in place today allow you to do that demand sensing technology. I think another area was around scalability. That was another problem that you talked to earlier, Corinne, you said start off with one or two customers, and, and that was great in the early days, but that was about as much volume as most supply chain solutions can, can, could mm -hmm. process. Now they can manage many more customers. And so the ability to get out not to your just top two or three customers and do vendor-managed inventory, but to get down to your top 10, top 20, top 30 and manage that process. Is this only a supplier to retailer relationship? I think with collaborative VMI, I'm starting to see a sea change there where these manufacturers that are supplying goods and products to other manufacturers are now starting to get involved within a VMI process. But it really is about understanding that demand from your customers, whether that's a retailer or some other manufacturer of goods, the better job you can do of maintaining proper inventory levels to meet customer expectations. All right, so there you've got a foundation in VMI fundamentals, um, as shared with us from, uh, from Ron Burnett, Product Director with Legility. We'll be back with Ron in another episode to talk a little more about the complexities of VMI and some of the best practices that you can apply to really streamline your operations and gain better visibility. Ron, thanks so much for your time today. Thank you, Corinne. This was a, a great topic, and it's a very timely topic as well. And there you have it, a very insightful look at the intersection of vendor-managed inventory and collaboration. Supply Chain Horizons is sponsored by Legility, a leading provider of supply chain solutions used by more than 1,250 companies in more than 70 countries around the world. You can find all our podcasts at www.legility.com. Just click on the library in the main menu navigation bar. And while you're there, we hope that you will also download one of our valuable white papers that cover a variety of supply chain topics. We also invite you to connect with us on LinkedIn, Facebook, and Twitter. That's it for today. Thanks again, and please join us next time for Supply Chain Horizons.